Wico or Sing by Kevin Gabbard. Wico, fade in, exterior deserted industrial neighborhood day. A young photographer, Wico Marty, late teens, inner city look and hustle, is walking alone on a trash strewn street through shadows under an elevated expressway. Camera in hand, cell phone to his ear. You look right at home here, a real shithole. I'm thinking black and white for the poster, shoot you guys separate against a green screen, stick you in wherever. Or we can come back out here, soak up the glamour. Interior recording studio continuous. A grunge band guitarist is standing by the sound mixing board, guitar straps slung over his tattooed shoulder, speaking on his cell. Flannery says the papers can pick it up, get you some nice ink. Intercut guitarist, Wico. Flannery happened to mention money? Um, sorry, what'd you say? Call you later. He snaps his cell shut and slips it into his pocket, goes back to taking pictures. The neighborhood is on its last legs, shut down factories, collecting soot, stripped cars, rusting where they were dumped. Series of shots. Rico clicks his way down the empty sidewalk, getting shots of a wall of graffiti, stepping around the front of a trailer truck backed into an alley. The man in sunglasses and ball cap behind the wheel is the only other face around doesn't look pleased when Wico casually points his lens at the rig. Hey! Get that thing out of here! Suddenly another truck comes bombing out of nowhere, a container truck with diplomatic cargo sticker on its side. Chasing the truck a block behind is a speeding black Mercedes. Wico has his camera up, starts shooting. Behind him, the truck in the alley gooses its engine. Wico turns, sees the 18-wheeler pulling out, pointing towards the expressway pillar across the street. The container truck flies by, missing the 18-wheeler by inches, disappearing down the street. Wico pans with the 18-wheeler stretching across the street and stopping, nose to the pillar, cutting off the Mercedes coming up fast. The Mercedes doesn't have a chance, goes into a screeching sideways slide. The air fails with a booming crash, sparks bursting, glass flying, the car crunching itself into a scrap heap under the trailer. All this Wico seeing through the viewfinder as he keeps on shooting. The 18-wheeler's cab isn't touched. The driver, Victor Crotty, still in his shades and ball cap, jumps to the pavement and jogs back to an SUV squealing to a stop next to what's left of the Mercedes. The SUV driver's door swings open and a hard-looking man named Emmer Lynch gets out. Ball cap and shades, just like Crotty's. He steps over to the mangled Mercedes, yanks open the twisted rear door enough to squeeze partway inside. Rico can see Lynch snaking around in there gets a shot of him coming back out with a laptop, the cover smeared with blood. Lynch is taking the laptop to the SUV when Crotty stops him and points at Wico. Kid's got a camera. Lynch whips around and Wico starts backstepping. The two men jump into the SUV. Wico spins around and takes off. Just Wico and them, nobody else in sight. Wico looks over his shoulder, sees the SUV coming fast. He swerves left and right, trying to throw them off. The SUV tires squeal right behind him, cutting back and forth every time he does. With the SUV bumper maybe two feet off his tail, Wico does a 180 and beelines back for the wreck. He dives under the truck cab and crawls towards the other side, the trailer and wreckage blocking the street enough so that the SUV can't get through. Halfway under, Wico hears a high-pitched cry coming from the wrecked Mercedes, a woman in pain. Wico scrambles through and stands up, can hear the SUV pull up on the other side of the trailer, Here's the doors open and the two men jump out. Voice is heard off screen. He's over there. Get him. Pop him and get that camera. Wico turns and runs. The woman trapped in the Mercedes cries out again. Cut two. The two men on the other side of the trailer are standing by the SUV, staring at the wrecked Mercedes. I thought she was dead. Get the fucking kid, I'll do this. Cut two. Wico is halfway down the block, running full out, glancing up at the sound of a siren on the overhead expressway. He glances behind him, sees Crotty on the cab now, taking aim with a pistol. Bam! The bullet pings off something nearby. Rico keeps running. Cut to. Lynch tosses a lighted match at the wrecked Mercedes, and poof! A pool of leaking glass ignites. Forget the kid, let's move it. That siren will be here in a minute. Crotty crawls out from under the truck cab, and the two men hop back into the SUV. The vehicle peels out in a semicircle and speeds away from the crash. Cut to. Rico hears the SUV peeling out, stops, waits to make sure, runs back to the crash. He crawls under the trailer, sees flames flickering around the flattened Mercedes. Woman's Please. voice off screen. Please, 
Get me. I can't. Rico puts his camera down and scrambles over and looks through the half-open door. The woman is wedged between the back seat and a big dark man in a blood-soaked suit. Very big, Arab-looking, very dead. The woman's legs are pinned by the wreckage. She has one hand free and is reaching to Wiko. Please. She's mid-twenties, looks and sounds American, has a stunningly beautiful face. Wiko grabs her hand and starts to pull, stops when she screams in pain. Wiko wriggles inside the car, can see the body of a driver in front. He grabs the shoulders of the dead man in back, tries to pull him away from the woman. Can't budge him, too heavy. Wiko glances at the spreading flames, looks at the beautiful woman. Can you move it all? She tries, grimaces. No. Rico can see that she's blood soaked too. Help's coming. The woman looks at him, eyes in and out of focus, then urgent. Alex? No, I'm Rico. Call Alex? Right. No idea what she means. And we need something to shimmy you out. He backs out of the car, steps away, and looks around. That's when the gas tank blows. Woomph. Time cut. Rico is looking out from on his back, can see the upside down face of a cop. The cop having grabbed him under the arms, dragging him back from the flames. Let me go! Take it easy. She's in there! The cop keeps his grip. Rico was knocked out by the explosion, was thrown just clear of the flames. He stares at the burning car, can see that nobody is coming out of that fire. The cop helps Rico to his feet, walks him over to a patrol car where his partner is calling in. Can't tell what year. It's got diplomat tags. The partner cop quits squints at the flaming Mercedes, looks over at Wiko. There's a kid here, probably can tell us something. Wiko glances at the partner cop, looks back at the flames. Man's voice off screen. This yours? Wiko turns. The first cop is holding the camera. Wiko left on the pavement. Wiko nods. The cop thumbs the camera display button, peers at the LCD screen, sees shots of the crash. Why were you taking these? I'm a photographer. And just happened to be here? Is that a problem? We're holding these. And you too. The door to the patrol car is open. The cop slides the camera onto the front seat. Rico looks at it sitting there. Don't move. Stay right there. An EMS van has pulled up and first cop goes over to meet it. While he's filling in the medics, pointing at the flames, them all looking grim, Rico eases over to the open car door. Carefully, he lifts the camera off the seat one eye on the partner cop who's still calling in. Keeping the car between the cop and himself, he eases around an expressway filler. Man's voice off screen. Hey! Rico whips around. The first cop is quick stepping towards him. Rico takes off with the camera. First cop right behind him, yelling at him to stop. Rico glances over his shoulder, sees partner cop back there too, huffing into his shoulder mic. Wiko turns his eyes front, and there's Lynch's SUV at the curb, silhouettes of Lynch and Crotty inside. Wiko slides to a stop, looks for an exit, looks behind him at the cops closing in, looks at the camera in his hand. He pops something no one else can see from the camera and cuts across the street. Using a big roundhouse motion to draw everyone's attention, he pitches the camera into the dumpster and yells, It's yours! Take it! With all eyes on the dumpster, he darts off again. Series of shots. Rico sprints past Lynch's opening door, turns at the end of the block and keeps going, making rights and lefts through the streets, checking his back, crossing an intersection and ducking into a subway entrance. Interior subway station continuous. Down on the platform, Rico hunches under a recess, stays there until a train pulls in. He checks both ways, jumps aboard just as the doors slide shut. Interior moving subway car, continuous. Wiko has the car to himself, takes a seat by the door at one end, takes a moment to catch his breath, then slips his hand into his pocket, pulls out a small plastic card. It's the flash card he popped on the camera just before he tossed it into the dumpster. He turns the card over in his fingers. Woman's voice, off screen. You get some good shots? Wiko looks up. Sitting across from him, the only other person in the car is the beautiful woman from the crash. Whoever got that camera is going to be pissed. Her clothes are ripped and covered with blood. Her hair singed and mangled. Half her face burned off. She's an unsettling combination of hideous and beautiful. I could have gotten you out. You tried. Trying ain't doing. True. You probably figured out by now it was the highest. The truck and that laptop? Who's Alex? You said call Alex. Alex is important. You probably paid to know what you know. You findable? Everybody's fine. 
her one good eye holds Rico's gaze. Speaking of which, do me a favor. What favor? Instead of beating up on yourself for not getting me out, use what you got on that card there to get the prick who did this to me. Rico looks down at the flashcard in his hand. When he looks back up, the woman is gone. Just an empty seat over there. No sign of her anywhere in the car. And the first seat.